Phil Lynch up, but he did it, and he laughs at him. Welcome back again to the West Ham Network as West Ham have signed our sixth summer signing, uh, Tielo, Tielo Kerrer from PSG. We've got the man over the line now. I was doing a show live earlier on where I was talking about how Hans Vanneken wants to come to the club just as I knew that we were going to get the announcement coming in from Tielo Kerrer. He's a versatile defender, plays as a centre-back, but also can cover at right-back. And he has signed on the dotted line um, to become our sixth summer signing. He is signing on a four-year contract, which I think is a good contract with an option for a further two years as well. Um, he's coming from PSG, so he comes with a lot of accolades. He was signed for a big money move when he went to PSG as well. And we have beaten some stiff competition in Europe for the signing of this player because he had knocked back an offer from Sevilla. So that's a huge deal that West Ham, that, that, that proves to some people that we can compete when it comes to bringing players into the club as well. He's a three-time league in winner, UEFA Champions League finalist and a regular starter during Germany's campaign for the 2022 qualifying campaign for the World Cup. He's a proven winner. And as the website is saying, he will add international and European experience to West Ham's side as well. He went on and he said himself during um, while signing for the club that, oh, where are we? Oh God, I've lost it now. It's just gone away from me. He's very excited to sign for West Ham and he's going to wear the number 24 shirt. He said, this is the best league in the world and I'm excited about coming to play in the Premier League. He said he talked to the manager and he told me about how he sees himself fitting into the club and his biggest goal now is to get into the team, integrate himself within the group and enjoy playing at West Ham. He does, like I said, become our sixth summer signing of the summer following centre-back uh, Aguerd, who is currently injured, um, Ariola, who signed on loan originally and now is a permanent player at West Ham, Gianluca Scamacca, uh, Maxwell Corney, and of course Flynn Downs. Um, but no other player has made more appearances or played more minutes under the German manager since he took charge of the national team in May last year, a German international. We all know what Germany are capable of doing in these big tournaments. Manager David Man uh, David Manager David Moyes has been speaking to the media and he is currently doing his press conference, which we will bring again to you for the Hammers headlines as well. And he went on and he said he's a young, talented, driven, and he's got the peak years ahead of him in his career. He says he's really pleased to welcome him to West Ham. He's a talented player who can play a number of defensive positions, adding strength and depth in our current options as well. What do we know about Tielo, um, uh career by coming to West Ham? Well, here is another little cheeky video letting you know everything you need to know about signing this player.
There you go. West Ham have signed our sixth summer signing of the summer. I'm going to bring on a guest as we discuss our signing, Richard Fasten, all the way from Joburg, my brother from another mother. How you doing, my man? I'm um, good. Thanks to you, mate. Buzzing with this yes. signing, must, must be honest. Yeah, good, mate. Yeah, good. I mean, I think a lot of fans, you know, when we do these shows, when we talk about them in the chat, all that sort of stuff, you know, it's not that we follow, you know, the football, that, that you know, the French football, you know, religiously, um, but he comes with a lot of accolades. You know, he's he's a German international. He's he's a big part of the German international team. He has had over a hundred appearances for PSG. He's got Champions League experience. Um, he has had a couple of injuries in his career, but he has ranked up there for pass completion amongst the centre backs in the top of the five European uh, countries of the best leagues around there. Um, and he significantly ranks higher than um, Dawson Aguerd and Kurt Zuma as well with those with those stats. But over to you. W w give me your thoughts. Yeah, look, I must be honest. I, I don't know a hell of a lot about this, this signing. Um, but, you know, I look at it on paper. £10 million pounds plus add-ons for a 25-year-old that's got 20 caps for Germany, that's played for PSG. He comes with a lot of pedigree and um you know in, in the situation that we're in struggling de desperately for um for uh, fit defenders you know getting someone in that can play center back that can play on both flanks he can play as a left back and a right back i think it's an absolutely phenomenal piece of business um so yeah i'm very very excited to have him in um i think psg were we're, were trying to get him out the door i know they're trying to get Navas out as well there's a couple of players they're trying to get off their books so it made sense for them it made sense for us just seems like it's the perfect deal and and just in time really for us because now obviously we've got thursday uh we got games on the weekend so yeah it's come at the perfect time yeah absolutely i think what's interesting about um this signing as well and you mentioned it is his versatility and you can see a pattern here now unfolding with the signings that uh, David Moyes is making because he wants a huge amount of versatility so it's great that we're bringing in a player who can play a center back but he can cover several different positions and you can look at you what what really is happening now Richard is that he's he's creating the ability for West Ham fans and opposition teams with the signings that he's bringing in and I, I, I'm not denying he needs to bring in more but to give the opposition not a chance of knowing what formation and what team is going to go out on the park and if the player is going to go out in the park what position that player is going to play. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we've got that versatility now. I think I think Ben Johnson must be buzzing that he's probably not going to have to play centre-back uh, the next few games because, <clears throat> excuse me, um, he's obviously had to fill in there and it's not been easy for him. Um, and, yeah. and more than anything, what the signing also does is just bring some competition. Um, you know, when everyone is fit again, we're going to be swamped with defenders. But right now, it was just a signing we needed to make. Um, yeah. So yeah, there he is. Absolutely buzzing to have him. I'm sure he's delighted to be playing in the Premier League. You know, he's played in Germany, he's played in France, and now he's playing in the best league in the world. So, well, yeah, the, the one thing, The one thing that excites me about this player, right, and again, for anyone that's watching, I don't proclaim to be what, sitting watching PSG week in and week out. I don't sit and watch the German international team week in and week out. Um, but when you are linked to these sort of players, it gives me an added 
you know, interest in looking into scouting reports and um, looking into a mixture of that, adding into the highlights or some, some, some of his ability. And one of the biggest things that I think this guy will bring to West Ham and he possesses with an abundance is his ball playing trait. He can play the ball. He likes the ball at his feet and he can carry the ball forward. It's something I've been saying for such a long time about our defence that we lack. David Moyes himself has said it. We've lacked that um that that ability to stop we need to stop conceding goals as many goals as we do we have done the amount of battles richard you've been involved in in the, in the whatsapp group about you know players defenders we've had since it's all gone wrong the arguments we've all had with each other but i just have this vibe about this player that he is quite calm he's quite collected when he gets the ball at the back and i think that's what we've lacked for such a long time i really really do and yeah. another thing to add to the equation for this player, you've mentioned that he's 25 years old and this deal is under 20 million quid. He's not a household name, but you don't have to have a household name to be a top touch player and, and, and for any team, do you? Yeah, no, definitely. I think, uh, as you've mentioned, I've, I've been uh, up in arms over the last couple of seasons just about, um, <laughs> you know, how sloppy we've been at the back and a lot of decision making of our centre backs has let us down in the last couple of seasons. So I'm hoping he can bring some composure. You mentioned he's a ball playing centre back, and that's something we haven't really had in the past. You look at a player like Issa Diop, uh, he couldn't really pass a ball properly. Yes, he could he could spray a couple, but he never looked comfortable on the ball. And and you know what? Um, someone technical like Kara brings is just that um, composure. And, you know, confidence in your defenders. If you've got a ball-playing centre-back that wants the ball and wants to get his midfielders involved in play, it, it brings a lot of confidence to the whole side to know that you've got defenders that can bring that to you. So, yeah, that, that's something I'm very excited about. And, you know, you say he's not a household name, but let's be honest, if you've got 20 caps for Germany at the age yeah, of 25, yeah, yeah, I mean, you've got to be half-decent. And I'll be yeah, honest, I don't, I, don't, I don't know PSG. I don't watch Germany that often. But I mean, if you look at twenty caps for Germany at twenty-five, you've got to be you've got to be decent. Yeah, absolutely. Let me bring on Jake from West Ham unofficial. Jakey boy, hey, um, Carreras come into the club. Tilo Carreras come into the club. He looks like he is up for the challenge. He is knocked back, supposedly Sevilla to come to the mighty West Ham in East London. Irons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very, very, very good signing. And I've just and I've just read a couple of minutes ago that PSG paid about 35 million quid for this boy a few a few a few years ago two two or three years ago i think he's in the top one percent of passing or whatever if you like your stats and all that but you know he looks like a very very um good signing he's um as as uh, richard just said he's he's played 20 um 20 caps for germany he's established himself he played 27 games last year in league one for psg um He's a very, very um, good player, and hopefully his passing ability and um, and bit of composure can uh, can help help us out and you know make us make us become a more passing effective team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's come through some of the best um, development um, squads in Germany through his time. A mixture of Stuttgart, who are really renowned and our Schalke for their youth products that they bring through. And that's obviously where he built up his, his abilities career and, and, and got his big move um, to PSG and um, where he has gone on and made a lot of appearances for the club. He really has. And albeit, I mean, he, he was quite, I think he was very, um, he, I think for the first half of last season, he was involved a lot for PSG. Um, but in the latter yeah. part of last season, he wasn't as involved. So mm -hmm. as, as Richard said, I think it was a no-brainer that he was going to move from the club, but I think it was a you know PSG. Pro it just wasn't working out anymore, and and um and, and it was time for a new challenge. And and he's at the he's at the prime of his career, twenty five years old, and 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 the biggest thing here is the versatility. I think that's huge for me. I really do. I mean, he can play at both fullback positions. He can play as a centre half, and I'm, I, I, you you're finding out more you read about him. He can actually play as a deep line midfielder. Yeah, David Moyes must be just sitting there going tick, 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 tick. tick, tick, tick. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. doing his due diligence on the player and thinking, man, this, and this is a sort of tick as well. Yeah, they absolutely. Have, they throwing a lot of money here. This seems like very shrewd piece of business. Ten million pounds plus add-ons for a player but, that has twenty caps for Germany. Yeah, and yeah. it shows you though. Like I, I can, I, I know there'll be a lot of fans that are currently sitting there going, 
well, you know, what, where's the 50 million pound? Where's the 40 million pound player? But we can always go back to those players that we signed in the past that didn't work out for us. The Sebastian Hallers, the Felipe Andersons, all that sort of stuff. But if we are trying to build something here and add players that can that can progress, I mean, is this a, is this a signing, Richard, that is West Ham trying to progress into the top six or trying to stay in the league? Yeah, it's, it's definitely... Um... A, a signing that that um, shows we're looking to try and uh, compete with the top six and establish ourselves in that position um, purely because we're bringing in someone that joined PSG at the age of 21 um, that's been playing Champions League football for a couple of seasons. So he's got that experience. You know, he's played at the, the highest level. And um, at 25, yeah, it definitely shows that um, we're looking to stay top six. Russ, you can, you can, you can, what, <laughs> Oh, he's, he's jumped off. R he's Russ, gone, jumps, he's Russ jumps on um, because he's getting really fed up with the fact that West Ham are signing players when he's never on um, on uh, duty yeah. on the on the network or whatever. So he's out with uh, he's out with Flo. And um, you know, I cut short a show earlier on. I'm actually on my lunch. So I'm taking an extended lunch today to be able to do this. But um, <laughs> but it's just great. It's it, it, it's it's great to see. Sorry, Richard, we cut you off there. But it, you're you're totally right, aren't we? It's 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 a good future thinking signing you know yeah. and jake patience is key obviously being a west ham fan and you can see how quickly the fans can turn especially in social media um you know but um there was a kind of double meaning there but um you know <laughs> you can see how fans can switch and think why are we not signing players where's where's the growth in the club where's the the, the thing but if you believe in the project of what David Moyes is trying to achieve, then surely you need to back him to the guns. He's not, he has said it from day dot. I am not signing players for the sake of it. Yeah. I am not doing it. So it's frustrating to think that you can miss out on a player because Wolves have maybe went and signed him. And that yeah. frustrates me. Of course it does. But then you look at this signing and you think, well, is this another piece of the jigsaw that matches? You know, when you think of Vladimir Safal signing, Tommy Suchek signing, no one really knew much about them. They came in, look what they did for the club. Go, go for it, Jake. Yeah, I think, you know, we've got to, we've got to buy into what he does. And of course, we all get frustrated with his, with his ways and, you know, not, not perhaps bringing on substitutes as early as we'd like, uh, for example, and not signing players um, as quickly as we'd like and not just getting the deals done. But at the end of the day, we wouldn't be in a position we are without David Moyes now. So you've, you've, you've got to take the, the good with the bad at the end of the day haven't you so um yeah and you know his signings do seem um nine times out of ten to be good you know out of the six summer signings we've signed so far obviously we haven't seen a few of them properly yet but they look like very good signings and this one um seems to seems to match that you know he's just about to hit the prime of his career we've paid 10 million pound for him which is peanuts and i am I understand what you said earlier about you know, people saying we haven't spent 40 or 50 million pounds on players. Yeah, but we have spent 20 on Corne, 35 on Skamaka. So it's not like we it's not like we're just spending five or 10 million pounds on every single player we're buying. You know, we are we are spending money here and it is it's it's very good to see. And I can see the way David Moyes is taking this and this player looks like he's going to fit in fit in perfectly very versatile can play quite a few uh can play quite a few positions and i think it's i think it's a very good signing here's a good uh, snap. And you, speak, yeah. uh, you speak about patience you know and and something we've got to think about in the transfer window i mean ideally i would have loved to have had all these players in pre-season you know for, come first game of the season we've got them all it hasn't it hasn't happened right but fine we've got our men in do you think um this Kura signing was a case of he wasn't available initially, and then PSG have now gone. He surplus to requirements, or is this someone we've been looking at and just taken a bit of time to to get the deal done? I, because I, I, ideally, I, I, I would have loved to have had all of these players in for for game week one. You know, hundred percent. I think you know. I just want to add that, and I'll come to you, Jake, in a second. But mm -hmm. I I totally believe in what. If any of you's watched the interview that David Moyes did with, I can't remember his name on yeah, YouTube. But yeah, um, I know. It, yeah. It's it he 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 doesn't talk in riddles, he's telling you the facts as mm. it is. And I think we've spoken about this before even David Moyes done that interview. We are in transition. So if we go back, right, if we go back to the signing of Chicharito, 
let's just bring this one back into the equation. We signed Chicharito, we gave him multi-million pound contract, crazy contract. He was on high level money. Pellegrini came in, spending a lot of money left, right and centre. West Ham hadn't transitioned, but were trying to make a high, quick, fast growth progression route to, 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 to growth. So we will sign big money players, we'll give them the big money wages and we'll let the players rely on them on the park. But that didn't work out. So David Moyes has said it's it's all about patience, it's all about key and we're a club in transition. So we are trying to leave the club that's trying to sign players to not get relegated to signing players that are going to try and challenge the top six. Therefore, what's involved in that is that players are going to knock back our club because we're challenging for a better quality player. And I think I understand that concept. It does make quite a bit of sense to me because maybe players are looking around and going, I'm, I, I, I'm not thinking of the Wolves player because that's maybe something to do with the Portuguese connection mm -hmm. at the club yeah. and maybe the money and maybe yes. Onana was the money and things like that. Yeah. But I think when it comes to the kind of nuts and bolts of the situation, players will be looking at West Ham going, why am I going to choose West Ham? Because they owe nothing to the club over if I get a chance at going to Tottenham, if a chance of toast Arsenal, a chance of going to Chelsea, or a chance of going to somewhere else that's going to play Champions League football. So I think Moyes has tried. I do believe it. And I think West Ham fans struggle with the time it takes to get deals done. But I don't think that's for the lack of trying. I think we are trying, but we are getting knocked back because, uh, we've, because we've transitioned to mm -hmm. these players, but these players, and we're, and we're getting... Do you know what I mean? That's my honest opinion. Goldfake. Yeah, as well as well with this signing is I don't think I don't think particularly David Moyes expected to sign another centre back. Yeah, we you probably thought like, word, there we go, we've got then um Diop was being okay as far as we were aware. So we had Diop, Ogbonna, Dawson, Zuma, Agward whoever else and he and he probably would have thought we could have got away with that but then we lose Diop we've got Dawson and Ogbonna injured he's probably thought well I probably didn't expect to sign another centre-back so, so he's so he's gone in he's probably had a short list of centre-backs and he's re perhaps revisited um, a player that he didn't get initially and he signed Tilo Kera and to be fair it's not a bad um it's not a it's not a bad signing is it where he where he's going to fit in when all the players come back from injury I'm not sure that's David Moyes' job to sort out. But yeah, I do I do agree, Anton. We are trying to sign the better players. And that started in the last January transfer window at the end of it, where we had those crazy bids for people like Nudez, Phillips, Rafinha. We were just chucking money about. And that was the that was the start of it. I think we've toned it down slightly this transfer window. We haven't gone we haven't gone that mad, you know, putting out sixty million pounds for Rafinha or whoever, but we are still trying to lift up and sign better players and I think that's a but, and I think that's and a big think, factor for it. And I think, you know, taking ourselves back to the current crop of players we've got in our defence, if we think about central defence in particular, we've got Ogbonna who's at the wrong side of 30, who's been in recent years one of our best defenders and he's picked up a really bad injury so he's going to take time to come back from that and this is going to be his last season, his last dance at West Ham. So, you know, we can't rely heavily on Oggy. We've obviously lost Diop. We can't um, Dawson, I, I think he's he's been phenomenal. I, I wouldn't really don't like to have anyone say a bad word about him. However, he is also on the wrong side of 30. And his knock, he was missing from training camp today again. So I don't know really what's going on with his injuries and, and all that sort of stuff. But he isn't the future. He isn't the future. And we all know that. So that really leaves us then with Zuma and Aguerd as our kind of potentially first choice centre half. Now, Aguerd, for me, it looks phenomenal. But we have not saw him in the Premier League yet. We've only saw him in preseason. But he does look like he is a top, top notch centre half. Zuma does look like he carries a knock. He does. Yeah. That's my biggest concern, really, with Zuma is he looks like he is at any moment going to crumble, and and then we're we're screwed for a centre half. Um, and I think bringing this player in is, like you said, Rich, a shrewd bit of business at the price. Um, for the fact that he's a 20-time capped German international. He is the most capped player under the current German national team manager as well. He plays him the most, so he fancies him for, obviously, the international tournaments. He's going to come to West Ham. I think he's going to get quite a lot of game time, if not the majority of the team game time, to be honest, because he is a ball-carrying defender. Um, and is he an upgrade when he plays in right back to what we've got? Is he an upgrade when he plays in left back to what we've got? 
Um, you know, crazy aging, lack of pace, um, and Safal. I don't like saying it, but he right does him. look like he's 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 struggling. He is struggling. Yeah, he, is, he does look like he's struggling as well. But if you can bring people in that can compete with those positions, and then you've got Safal as the backup, and you've got Creswell as the backup, and eventually. Yeah you know, all that sort of stuff, then to me, it does show progression. We still need to see these players in the league and they need to bond and gel. Obviously they do, but I I, I honestly believe it's what Moyes does. I do believe it. I, I, I get pissed off at the team selection as you all did, Rich, against Nottingham Forest. I got pissed off at the team selection. I was like, why are we not just, you know, Skamaka can play the game. Skamaka can start the game. Corne can start the game. No one's telling me that they can't. They can I get what Moyes was trying to achieve, but it didn't work out. But now he's going to have options, and these players give us options as well. Over to and it Rich. brings the average age of the squad down as well. You know, you look yeah. at the signings we've brought in. Skamaka's young, Agurd's young, um, Kera's young. You know, so Corne's also right side of, of he's younger than 30. So it does. It brings the squad age down as well. These are young, younger, uh, more energetic, fitter players coming through. Um, you know, historically, we've gone for the big names regardless of their age. Now, we've gone for players that are playing for their country. They're not superstars just yet. You know, they haven't they haven't cracked it properly, but they're just there. You know, we're giving them that platform now to go out there and become world-class, which is, that that's what's exciting for me. They haven't, none of these players have made their name yet. You know, yeah. they're kind yeah. of just simmering. We know they're good, but can they be world-class? So that, that's yeah. what's exciting for me. Rob's projector wall says about time we had some positive news. Absolutely. Andrew Fielding is saying, are you going for the Alfie Solomon Peaky Blinders? Look, Anton, I've not watched Peaky Blinders, so I have no idea who you're talking about, um, if I'm being brutally honest with you. Uh, Morrill says, come on, you irons, let's go. Um, what's he like on corners in the opposition box? Good and question. Six Good foot question. One. But he's only six foot one. But, I mean, he's yeah, still he's tall. He's tall. Yeah, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's still tall, but he's not... Um, He's not. I mean, if we, if I was talking earlier on about bringing in um, Vanekin, and if we brought Vanekin in at six foot five, I think officially we would be absolutely dominant in any set piece moving forward as well. Um, is very Kara available fit. for tomorrow. Yes. Yes. He, he has. Is available. Yeah. 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 He yeah. Is. That's good. But I'd be in, I'd, I'd be intrigued to know if he would even remotely be considered because we know what David Moyes does. We know what yeah, David Moyes is a bit like, you know. So oh, Ben Johnson turns it back, standard. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Papa Firth is saying he's quick as well. Um, has that come up? Yeah, it has. David H is saying, oh God, it's a bit slow for some reason. Penny and uh, the meter. Tricky decision regarding going straight into the team. Um, fans will want home straight in, him straight in. I think this time he might be for the Brighton game. I mean... If he's come in and he's got a preseason under his belt, which he has, from what I understand, he has got a preseason under his belt, then it will be a case of the next couple of days working with the rest of the team and, and, and seeing if he's available. But the question I would ask to you, Jake, then is, is it Ben Johnson or is it going to be um, career to start against Brighton? Well, I would, I would, uh, I would, I would even start if he's if he's fit, then I'd start him tomorrow night. But we all realistically know that that's not going to happen. He's had three weeks with Skamaka or something, and he still hasn't started yeah. him. Um, so I would be incredibly surprised if he started tomorrow. It'll be Johnson tomorrow, um, and it will be Kara on Sunday. That's optimistic. Alexander says, no doubt Moyes will bench all our new signings saying we're not match fit. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, you don't sign for PSG if you're not good enough. Also took a fit Ramos out of the side this season. There you go. Um, also sell Ben Ramos to get funds and another attacker from the academy. Um, we also need to figure out why our centre-backs keep getting injured. I think mm -hmm. there's a reason why they do because they're all the wrong side of the age that they really need to be, to be mm -hmm. honest. no, I'm not being Sorry. horrible, but yeah. Um, the Danish team was not able to bring their two best players due to visa issues. Yeah. Yep, join me for the Hammers headlines, where I'll talk about that in a bit more detail. I think it's a great deal, to be honest, and he knows Ariola is good talking French. The communication with the two main centre-backs would be a good connection. Rich, thoughts? Yeah. I want to see Ariola starting. I've, be, I've been saying it, so yeah, I'd love to see him in, the, in between the sticks, and then obviously, hopefully, his relationship with Kura can, can flourish and that would be great to have them two as like a stable base at the back. Um, but yeah, I've been calling Fariola to to start for a while now. I think it's I think it's his time. 
I don't know what yeah. your guys' thoughts are on that. Yeah. Um, I, I think, yeah, I think I do agree as well. Yeah. Uh, Gary saying, I think he's both footed, so he could probably play multiple positions. Good on the ball, good burst of pace. Um, happy with the signing from Jonathan. It was painful to get here, but no uh, sets out backline for years to come. Dawson are on the way out. Zuma Aguerd, career is the future for the youth of the fourth spot. Agent career to bring in some German youth. He's very composed with the ball. Your dad's in the house. Hope you're well, Rich. Uh, career has no problem dribbling out of trouble as well. He's an upgrade in Diop, and that's what we have to look at. And that's true, isn't it? Yeah. Would you say that? I mean, from what you've saw, from what you've read, from what you've understood, I mean, to be honest, it's the same situation. When Diop signed Rich, did we really know much about him until we kind of started looking into him? So is this an upgrade in Diop? I think so. Um, you know, time will tell. And because uh, when, when Diop joined us, he, he was also the next big thing. He had captain to lose in, in Ligue 1. And, you know, he was he was very highly rated. But um, he's his form really, really dipped over the last two, three seasons. So, you know, looking at the stats, looking at the pedigree um, that Kura brings, it's definitely an upgrade on, on Diop. So I'm, I'm absolutely delighted, personally. Yeah, absolutely. Is this a Rob Newman signing, uh, Jake? Yeah, I think he, I think he's got an influence in every signing that we've made this summer. If I'm honest with you, you know, I think I think we've I think we've brought in players that David Moyes agrees with that probably most of them Rob Newman um, has identified because that's his job. Um, at the end of the day, I think it's I think it's good um, that we've that we've brought in another um, another centre back that is a good age. We're talking about um, perhaps the left back Emerson, who who is a bit older, but he's still the right side of thirty as far as I'm aware. Um, so yeah, it's good, and you can see the kind of brand of um, defender that we're trying to uh, that we're trying to bring in there. It's good. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that really does bring an end to the show. So as we know, career signed for West Ham, six summer signing as we move on to our next signing. Um, but before we do go, Rich, predictions for tomorrow night? Um, we'll win. We'll definitely win. I just I just hope there's no banana skins. Uh, I'm going to go 3-0. 3-0 win. 3 know West Ham. Cool. Looking forward to that. Fingers crossed we do. And before I ask you, Jake, if you haven't already, make sure you do go and check out West Ham Unofficial. Hit that subscribe button over there. Some fantastic content, including match day vlogs, which are quality. Everyone to yeah. their own. So keep doing them, young Jakey boy. We all love Legend. them. A fan are. Legend, <laughs> Legend, my friend. So if you haven't already, go and check out West Ham Unofficial. We are all West Ham and that's what we do. We follow and support our fellow West Ham fans. Jakey Boy, what's your predictions for tomorrow? I was going to say 3 0, but I don't like doing the same prediction as somebody else on a show. So I'm going to have to mix things up. And I'm going to go 4 0 um, to West Ham. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, um, hopefully we see some mix, mix ups um, with the starting lineup. And I think we beat them comfortably. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Listen, for everyone who's watching, stay safe. If you are new around here, please make sure you do subscribe to the channel. And we will see you very, very soon. Come on, you bloody irons. Come on, you irons.